I want to dive down and explore one of your companies, one of your products. In fact, we've got one right here called Profi, um, which I love and thank you for this. I, what, what's the story behind Profi? Where, where did it begin? Where did this, where did this seed for this originate? So when, when COVID and, hit... And, and what is it? <laughs> yeah. Um, when, when COVID hit, we were uh, developing a nasal spray to treat multiple sclerosis. There's a lot of immune cells in the nasal lining. Um, and we had developed a, a platform um, spray that could um, a, a, a attach to the lining of the, the nose, stay there for long periods of time, and deliver drugs um, to those immune cells. And we started to get some pretty interesting results. Um, COVID hit, um, and we asked this question, every single project in the lab, how can we help? And we started to discover, um, based on previous reports and some new science that was being developed, that um, COVID spread via droplets. Um, they stayed in the air for long periods of time, even after someone infected left the room, that these um, droplets- so, so the six foot rule was not actually gonna be a valid option. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, some arbitrariness to that, to, to, the, to the six feet. Um, but, you know, we got to start somewhere, right? We got to put something in the ground and then, and then sort of use that as a way to, to discover, you know, what, how we might change it. So, um, we also started to learn that COVID can bind to goblet cells that are in the nasal lining and that's a major anchor point. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we started to understand that many respiratory pathogens actually anchor and get, uh, you know, kind of take hold in the nasal lining. That's the major entry point into the body. And so we started to think okay, how can we help? And we thought, okay, could we develop a three-prong approach um, for creating a nasal spray that could effectively capture respiratory droplets that could prevent a barrier for the virus to cross the epithelium of the nasal lining? And could we also neutralize the virus and potentially bacteria um, uh, when it binds to this, um, this spray? And so what we did is we also, in the concept, we, we, we sort of applied this concept of radical simplicity because mm. we didn't want to include drugs in it because we knew if we put drugs in it that it was going to take six, eight, ten years to bring this to, to market. And so we said we're only, the guardrails were, we're only going to use agents that are on the generally recognized as safe list or have pre previously been used as excipients, pharmaceutical excipients in nasal sprays. And so we looked at that entire landscape and we started... Um, um, sort of looking at the individual components, there's preservatives in nasal sprays that can prevent bacterial growth. There's surfactants uh, in nasal sprays. Surfactants can, you know, soap is highly effective right. for most viruses and bacteria. If you, um, you know, kind of wash your hands long enough, you, you kill most things. And so we started to experiment, um, uh, you know, looking at hundreds of different combinations of agents that we thought might per sort of achieve the these properties and we discovered a formulation where we got in laboratory conditions 99.99% kill of covid-19 h1n1 influenza a and b adenovirus rsv um uh, e coli and a form of pneumonia um, and this was with an infectious disease researcher that we teamed up with at the Brigham and then what we also did is we administered 10 times the lethal dose of H1N1 um, via um, uh, nasal drops to a, a mouse, and they all the mice, they don't do well, they all die. But if we pre-administer the Profi formulation, they all survive, and we saw minimal uh, viral load in the lungs. That's extraordinary. So what we did is we teamed up with two regulatory advisors, one Peter Hutt, um, who was previously the general counsel at the FDA, another regulatory advisor, um, and then an international toxicology consulting firm. They all agreed that the agents that we had in Profi um, were safe and that we could regulate this as a cosmetic we can't make strong claims about this product, but we can talk about the science that we've conducted in the lab and the article that uh, the science that we've been doing, we've put out into the public access so anyone can see our data and we've submitted it for peer review. So it's out for peer review right now. So, so when did this become available? So, um, so I launched the product at um, uh, the Near Future Summit uh, uh, is that, is in them, October. Is that <laughs> is them. Amazing conference, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. So, I so October of... of Last year. Of last year, what that was 23. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, this sounds like what everyone should have on their shelves. 
and I now have this. Mm -hmm. um, can I just try it? For sure. Yeah. So um, what is happening um, as, so what's in here? A surfactant? So we have, uh, yeah, there's, there's a few ingredients that are in there. Profi, um, everyday nasal spray. So this is actually something that you would recommend sort of as a prophylactic everyday use. Yeah, I before you get on an airplane, when your kids are sick at home. Exactly. Yeah, before a meeting, before you go to an event, a concert. So I take it twice a day when I get up in the morning uh, and then midday. Um, and uh, and actually, we we have some data that's emerging from the lab um, that this may be effective for allergies as well to prevent um, allergens from getting so kind of creating a barrier to allergens. Um, so the data actually is quite compelling and we're still doing some experiments to, so to I think examine. of this as sort of a, a HEPA filter for your nasal cavity. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, super easy, pleasant, nothing negative. Yeah, yeah, it's like a, a gel composition. Um, most of it's actually water. Um, so there's, you know, it's like 2% gel and, and other components. So, so, I'm I'm just thinking about this because it seems like this is extraordinarily simple, effective, but you can't make medical claims. We but can't, you can't. You, what what can you say about this? Well, what's on the box is kind of what we could say, <laughs> and we're sort of experimenting with that um, as well. Uh, and we do have plans to uh, to investigate this more rigorously in people. Um, and, um, you know, we're just sort of in the process. So is this, uh, a, is this available online or yeah, yeah, yeah. No. you can purchase it online? What's it, what's it cost by the way? Uh, it costs uh, $20 for a month supply. Uh, so, so that would be two, uh, sprays, uh, a day, you know, one in each, each nostril. So for 30 days or so, uh, yeah, I have my longevity platinum trips that yeah. I, I give out, uh, products and I need to put this in everybody's, uh, cool. everybody's bags. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, this is, um, uh, so I remember um, University of Washington has a protein design labs, and they had been talking about a nasal spray for something that would bind the, uh, the spike protein mm -hmm. and disable it in that regard. But this doesn't work in that way. No, th this works, I think, like, you know, it's similar to how soap works, essentially. So we're were um, disrupting the membranes of the, the um, viruses and bacteria, and that can neutralize them. And so it, it basically reduces the load that your immune system has to, to fight. Exactly. Yeah. I, I kind of think of like protection in layers. So, um, you know, masks will provide a certain level of protection dependent on the masks. Um, actually, I did a lot of work with masks when, when um, COVID hit. Um, I co-led this initiative to create a backup plan for N95 masks. So just in case the hospital system ran out of masks. Yeah. And um, we made a lot of interesting sort of observations, which is um, when people wear generally a surgical mask, the, the mask material is quite good at filtering out COVID and other pathogens. The problem is, is that it only filters about 40 or 50 percent of the air because there's gaps that occur in the mass. So a lot of the air that you're breathing in and out is actually not being filtered. And that's where N95 comes in. Um, and we actually one of the um, technologies that we also developed during COVID was we developed a surgical. We took a surgical mask, which is you know readily available and you know, has a wire on the top. Yeah. We added wires to the sides and the bottom of the mask. So that you can face fit it like an N95. <clears throat> and then we created this flap on the inside. So if you cough, the flap opens up and captures the cough more efficiently. And then we put these little um, kind of uh, additions here so that you could cinch the um, you could cinch the strap to make it tight, like to have a, right. a really good fit.